welcome everyone to the Q Sports International Expo being hosted at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. This is the Predator World 10 Ball Championship presented by Q Sports International and sponsored by Predator. We have a third round final stage match between Jason Shaw and Sanjin Belivanovic. Uh, this will be a race to 10, 10 ball. This is George Teich and Booth, joined by Tony Robles, the one and only. George, it's great to be back in the booth with you again. It's, it's always a, a pleasure. Same here, sir, same here. What a great match, and this man right here about to break the balls has probably been playing better on this table than anyone we've seen throughout the tournament. That's correct, and he's also been breaking the balls extremely mm -hmm. well. And the winner here, I believe, goes to the semifinal, right, George? That is correct. It'll be uh, stage four, and it'll be the 4 p.m. Uh, semi-final. We have two matches, one at four and one at um, one at four and one at six. I'm sorry, one at four. Bo yeah. Both semi-finals we played at four o'clock on different tables. Of course, we'll bring you one. And then the final at eight o'clock, we'll have a break. Meanwhile, Jason's done well to get on this two ball. Uh, he's going to have to Move the cue ball around for the three. Yeah, um, because I don't think it yeah. goes past the nine. No, it doesn't go to the right side of the table, so it's only on the left side. Can you spin that ball two rails going close to the corner pocket? That's the side pocket's too big for that, isn't it? Well, if he goes two rails, he just needs to manage the speed, make sure he doesn't overhit it. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, unless it goes past the eight, which I doubt. Yeah, it does. See if he can come in close. Yeah, see, I, that's beautiful the way. Wow, he hit that great. Yeah, he wrapped it out Man. of there real nice and perfect on the three. And that's what I meant about earlier that he's probably been playing this table better than anyone. You know, he's controlling the cue ball better than I've ever seen mm -hmm. him before. And I think that he's gotten to a point where he's extremely comfortable with the table. Yeah. Well, Jason seems to settle in right away on most tables, no matter yeah. what. And Jason is at this third round final stage. In the very, on the winner's side, he opened up with a match 8-6 win over Jose Alberto Delgado, an 8-7 win over Coping Chung, an 8-5 win over Ali Alobadi. And then in the final stages, he defeated Justin Martin 10-2 and Mishko Fortunski 10-7. So it's a little who's who. Oops, I just read off all the all the matches that Sanjin played. I'll have to read them all off in the next before he shoots these two balls. He started out with a Jonas Suto 10-3, Francisco Sanchez 10-5. He beat all the Spaniards. <laughs> then uh, on the one last side, since he uh, it was Mark. Marco Tucher, he beat Marco Tucher, Tommy Tokov, and Torsten Holman. And then he just got done beating Francisco now, the match before this. Yes, that was on the final 32. He beat Jonas Suto and Francisco Sanchez. So um, yesterday and today, he took out the Spanish contingent. He said, I'm from Scotland, you're from Spain, go home. <laughs> Well, Sanjin, I think, think that's come, starting to come into his own. Uh, he's only 20 years old. That's a crazy mm -hmm. thing. And mm -hmm. he's just playing extremely high level pool. Well, we saw him in another match here on the TV table where he, where he, uh, he, he, he played very, very well. I'm trying to remember the match. But he's a 799 Fargo to Jason's 821. And like you said, he's a 21-year-old WPA junior champion, eight-time Euro champ. He's from Bosnia Herzegovina. He is sponsored by Predator, and he's playing with the beautiful Pantera. They're hard to come by. Yeah, I think they're they're only 100 made, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. of, of that one. That's what I was told. But yeah. you know, it's a gorgeous cue. Well, unfortunately for him, he didn't make a ball. Which brings this deadly man, Eagle Eye, to the table. 
And everything is lined out pretty well for him. Once he gets in line, he stays in line. It's going to yeah. be hard for somebody to take him off his game. I spoke to him briefly uh, before the match started, and Jason told, I said, how are you feeling? And he said, all I hope is that the break works. Mm. That's exactly, that's, that's all he said. Well, Because, you know, he's in control of all, mostly, he can make most of the shots, just about everything. But, you know, no matter how well you break, you can't always control that break. Of course, and, you know, like you said, he can make almost every shot. His position is impeccable. Uh, how, do you, how do you defend against that, Tony, as a player? How do you compete against that? You know, um, years ago when Michael Jordan was in, was in his prime mm -hmm. with the Chicago Bulls, someone asked him, he says, what do you do to stop him? He says, you can never stop him. You can only hope to contain him. <laughs> you know? and, and in pool, that's an, you know, you, the only way to contain a player is to, is to play him safe and really good safeties. And we saw on his last match that we saw on the TV table where he was played safe in, you know, just jam up safeties and he kicked out of it made a ball and ran out yeah so how do you contain him well containing him you know it's not just playing defense it's breaking well making a ball and hoping you get a shot and run out every time <laughs> it's the only way you can contain but you can't well, stop him <laughs> basically you, basically you uh tie wrap him to his chair is that what you're saying yeah duct tape works best I mean, look how perfect uh, his, his I'm speed control is. Exactly. Been, uh, and this is like the third match I watch him play on this table, and it's like he's just, he's, he's spot on with everything. Yeah. He's playing. I he, uh, asked him about the extension on his cue. He says it's only uh, six to eight inches. Uh, it just <laughs> looks a lot longer. Very cues. His uh, break cue is a carbon fiber, but his playing cue is wood. Playing shaft is wood. He will take two games. And we'll go to a break right after this 10 ball for a commercial break. Oh. oh, no, we won't. We will keep going. We're going to stay with you here. This is the only WPA-sanctioned world championship to take place in American soil. And the 64 playing field that we had last year and a couple years before that has been increased to 128, as has the prize money. We are now looking at over a quarter million dollars in prize money, 60000 to the winner. To give you an example, in this third round of the one loss of, of the final round, uh, there's four matches. And each one of those uh, players that loses this match goes out with an $8,000 check. So that's 32 grand. The past. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> the past round uh, was 30,000 at 3750 for the players. And you had uh, eight players go home with that. So that money keeps adding up. And these guys are playing for a lot of money because the loser, the winner here, is going to move on to play for a minimum of $20,000. That's, That's what he gets for losing the next match. Wow. And of course, if you win that, you get yourself into the final, which you get either 60000 to win or 40000 as second place or runner-up. So the money is great. And it's and only going to improve from here. It's, mm -hmm. only, it's only going to improve. Mm -hmm. Well, as I said earlier, you know, what Jason told me before the match is, you know, all I got to do is hope that the break works. And there is it. This is his first dry, yeah. dry break. I was going to say, you know, the, the money's great. That break was not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering if he's going to try to come around, like, between the seven and the cushion. He can either hit this super soft, kick it in, and take a slightly tougher cut on the two ball right there. Or he can hit it with some speed and then go between the seven, which is a, a more dangerous shot. This is a safer shot. Mm -hmm. Well, he can see the one, right, to make it. No, he has to go rail first, I think. That's, oh, why, he's looking oh, at the, gotcha. that's why he's looking at leaving the cube over there. I thought he could see Let's it. Let's see if he scribbles a cue stick. Yep. He's, oh, he could see the one. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't think he could see it at all. I don't understand why he just didn't try to bump the four with uh, left-hand English. He yeah, could have definitely done yeah, that. I mean, maybe, I he, maybe, he didn't want to, maybe he didn't want to end up straight, but yeah. Uh, Maybe he didn't want to end up straight because of three, uh, I, I guess, but the three looks like it goes past the five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just, I was, you know, I was going to, I was thinking he might just 
up to four, but. I think he got more angle here than we bargained for. He was he was aiming at about, you know, maybe eight inches to the right of, above of where he is, so. You think that's what he's looking at now when he pointed to the four? That mm -hmm. he should have done that? That could be. I should have listened to George. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't <laughs> say it. I didn't say. I just thought it. Well, then he read your thoughts. <laughs> there you go. If somebody can read my mind, they're a genius. A lot more than a genius. Well, let's see if he can hit it with inside spin and spin it to that side of the table. Well, oh. he's going to end up with a bank on the three ball. Yeah, he tried to go in between the 10 and the five. <clears throat> Either the, the bank or he's going to try to put him underneath that five ball. Mm -hmm. Would Other you consider option, banking this? I mean, it's position. It all depends on, you know, because banking this with inside spin is, is not easy. It's not easy. Because and you're trying to hold up the cue ball from running into the five and the 10. Right. And so he's either going to put him underneath the five or underneath the four. Underneath the five is better because you don't have to travel that much. Yeah, it went up pretty high, so he, he's going to he's going to lock him up with Loctite. And let's see what happens here with Jason. One rail kick to the side pocket. Yeah, he called the side pocket. <clears throat> That's what he's looking to do. He's looking to hit that side of the ball in the hopes that if it hits a long rail, it'll go in front of the four ball. Then have the cue ball, you know, run into the seven or behind mm -hmm. the seven or the six. Oh, he oh, just he went by the entire ball. Bit. Well, opening for Belovanovic, young man from Poland. And I read off all his uh, uh, opponents this tournament: Justin Martin, Mishko Fortunski. He's uh, he's undefeated throughout this whole tournament. Really? So he yes. hasn't lost a match. He hasn't wow. lost a match. Jose Alberto Delgado, Koping Chang, Ali Al Abadi, Obadi, and he's won by margins of 10-2, 10-7, uh, 8-6, 8-7, and 8-5. So you only had one hill hill match, one tightly can set, and that would have been Koping Chang, I believe it was oh, on wow. the table. It was understable. That's the match he played, and he played very well. And that's what's so tricky about formats like, like this, where you have mm -hmm. single elimination. You know, sometimes it's a little tough to swallow when you know that you lost to someone who already had one loss, and you just had your first loss, and you're out of the tournament. But that's, you know, it's the nature of the beast. I mean, the format is still excellent. When you get down to the final, what, 32, that's when it becomes single elimination. Correct. Because if you did double elimination, it'd take forever to finish a tournament. Well, especially when they increase the race to 10. Mm -hmm. That's why they increase the race to 10, because it's now single elimination. And players don't seem to complain about that. They, no, I don't think they should. I'm, I'm just saying that I've, I've had some of them, you know, complain mm -hmm. before in the past, but it's been quite some time since I've seen them complain because this keeps you and forces you to play your best at all times. The, Once exactly. you get to the single elimination format, helps you to stay focused. Especially today. These guys are going to play four matches today. Mm -hmm. They started at 10 o'clock, and then 12, 4, 6, and 8. No, we won't have that 6 p.m. match. Well, we will have a 4 p.m. match. Oh, wow. That's a surprise there. Well, he's going to call the bank here. I think he called the bank already. This bank I like a lot better than the other one because he was too high up, if I remember correctly. He's going to come around with the cue ball. Beautifully done. And again, his speed is spot on. Overhead that one a bit. Mm -hmm. Wondering if he's going to draw back. We're going to go follow with two rails. Follow two rails. Go slightly past the nine and end up with a nice cut. Oh, he decided to play in the corner. Well, it's all that straight pool he's been playing. It's not just that. He's such a great. He's. Uh, I consider him one of the greatest shot makers mm -hmm. to ever play the game. Yeah, he's. He's, he's supremely not. confident. Doesn't matter where, where where you leave him on the table. I would be too if I hit the ball like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
We will go to a timeout for a commercial break here after this 10 ball, and he will lead 3-0. And we are back to live action. And Sanjin Pelovanovic will be breaking the balls here, down 0-3. And a little news from some of the other matches. We just finished up a match from the 10 a.m. Uh, round. Christopher Tevez from Peru just defeated Carlo Beato 10-8 after being down 5-0 wow. to start things off. Is that young man playing good or what? That's that's amazing. Good for him. Yeah. Robbie Capito and Darren Appleton are at Hill Hill in their match from 10 a.m. That once the winner of that uh, wins, we will be down to our final eight players. Two of them you're watching. Two of the others: Edgy Geronimo versus Bochik uh, Chefchik. And now Yuki Oi and Eklund Kachi, the reigning the reigning defending champion, playing mm -hmm. Oi. Well, didn't they play in the final last yeah, year? Yeah, they played in the final last year, and here they are just to get into it. Um, they're playing in the quarterfinals. Meanwhile, Sanjin breaks the balls, and. Kind of ends up leaving the safety on the one. Kick shot for Jason. Nice speed. Again, the speed. it's going to leak out a little bit. He's going to be able to see it. Good thing for Jason is the 10 doesn't count. So mm -hmm. must be the last ball pocketed. Tony Robles is in the booth with me. This is George Tha, and we're watching 
the first lady of pool, Nikki Latab. Referee this match. <coughs> Look at his cue ball. Look, did he leave the, the door open on the way out? It might be. He might be able to see the top part of the one. If he's got a window between the 7 4, <laughs> uh, Sanjay's going to sit there and be sick. I just thought he would miss. He did have a window, and look what he yeah. and he pays the price. But this is a, a, a good one rail kick or two rail kicks. This is a good shot. Uh, in fact, I was I was. I saw a shot on YouTube where um, Efren Reyes just kicks a shot like that right in. Two rails into the left-hand corner pocket like it's nothing. And yeah, there are several players there's that there's feel very players comfortable with that with that, with that yeah. shot, kicking it two rails. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday, I think it was, or the day before, that the shot is, is just, they seem to play, all play it. Probably displaying Bosnia and Herzegovina. But this young man will jump. The air rush, he is a Predator Pro player, so he uses the air rush. And the BK rush is a break cue. Well, and there goes a oh one back boy. to that side of the table, and he might running. need the bridge here, but see, can he reach it without needing the bridge? Well, he is oh yeah. left-handed. Oh yeah. He oh is yeah. left-handed, so yeah. Jason is showing us his uh, athletic skills by getting up on top of the table almost and still keeping a foot on the on the ground, on the floor. Looks like he's gonna need to shoot the floor in the lower right-hand corner pocket from what I see here. Unless he wants to get fancy and play precision position between <laughs> the seven and the eight for the four in the side. I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> you, you, you may, you're, he's making fun of me, folks, about saying precision. Um, no, no, I no, usually no. have a problem with that word. No, oh, I'm no. saying pinpoint oh, <laughs> or immaculate. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm sure I can point better. <laughs> Impeccable. Yeah. <laughs> I looked up words that meant the same. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh oh, he's coming over. He's got that shot, like you said, off to the bottom corner pocket. The six ball goes by, and uh, he's off enough. Of, he's off of the rail enough to just kind of stop that ball. He's going to come off the rail with a little follow. You, you think he'll go to the rail and back? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. With this angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see the with the angle you see there, George? Yeah, definitely follow. I got it. Saw it. Appleton and Capito must be having one heck of a last game because they're still at 9-9. They haven't updated the, the bracket. <coughs> a friend of mine just texted me and said, Jason Shaw just created a new yoga pose. <laughs> uh, and Jason, to run these three balls out and he's looking real good at it. We are at the Q Sports International Expo where we have a ton of pool players here. We got about 6,000 of them in three different ballrooms. And a beautiful shot by Jason for this 10 ball to increase his lead to four and the break. We'll keep going here. Q Sports International Expo is comprised of the BCA World Championships, the USA National Championships. We just had the Alpha Las Vegas Open, and we are now into the Predator World 10 Ball Championship, which ends tonight with the final at 8 p.m. And we also are in the middle of the Alpha Las Vegas Women's Open, and I believe this is a world title for the women. 
from what I understand, the, the women are very, very happy with this event and the opportunity to be able to play something like this with this format. So they should be ecstatic. This is one of the best things that's happened to women's pool in a long time here. And uh, we'll bring you their matches tomorrow. I spoke to Allison Fisher about it. I spoke to Jennifer Beretta last night. And they're, they're really, really excited with what Karim is doing, especially the, the fact that he's involving the women. Well, there's 64 of them playing and competing for some prize monies. Uh, tomorrow we'll bring you all that information. Uh, right now they are competing. They have, well, we're down to just uh, uh, four, four tables right now because we have four matches. And they're using all the rest of the uh, 14 tables. And they'll be using this one exclusively tomorrow because our final here for this tournament is 8 p.m. tonight. Will this man at the table right now be in there? You know, I think the question is, will his wife finally let him buy that 83-inch TV that we've been talking about? <laughs> you and him are talking you know, about I'm, I'm, uh, Jason and I have been talking about this for years because uh, he knows I'm into home theater and I have, uh -huh. you know, an OLED TV in my house. I love the OLED technology. That's another story. But I told him that eventually, I said, I've been working for 10 years trying to accumulate a accumulate as many points as possible to convince my wife to let me buy an 83 inch TV and I still feel like I have I, she's barely budged well, I hope you get your TV Tony <laughs> but I think the Capito and Appleton match is over as we heard a loud scream and um, some pounding over there and I'll bring you the update shortly as soon as it updates on the on the bracket here that I'm looking at meanwhile Sanjin will be, I don't know, he's going to kick the one ball to that corner pocket. I like that shot. You like this? He can also hold the cue ball. Absolutely. You know, if he, he can also kick to hit half of the two ball mm -hmm. and send the cue ball to the long ray on the left side with spin and then come underneath, you know, the, the four and the ten. Kind of like that. You see, but hit it thinner yep. than that. He's going to end up he got with, away nice with it there, though. Got away. I think I think you played it that way. Oh yeah, yeah. You think so? I think so. Okay. Because I think that's kind of risky. You have to hit that absolutely perfect that way. But okay. Well, you're the pro player. <laughs> yeah. No, I I wouldn't uh, play that way. I think it's a higher percentage mm -hmm. shot because you have potentially the six, eight, ten, mm -hmm. and if you already hit it, I think if if you hit it thinner, that is, you know. Now, the one thing about shots like this, though, is if you're not uptight against the ball, these guys just jump everything, as you can see. And There's a great jump shot there. <laughs> He's clapping for himself, <laughs> not people clapping. Because <laughs> no, not a single person clap well, after you read know, <laughs> We need to get John Lehman or Michaela Tab out there and instruct the crowd if you see something you like. Yeah. Give us, a, you know, let the players know. Uh, people are kind of afraid to clap, I think, sometimes. They're just yeah. not, they, they don't know if they should be quiet because of, you know, pool is a concentration game or if they should be vocal. Mm. Did he get away Hello? with it? He, he's left he the left have. side of the ball. He can see the left side of the ball. I don't believe he can pocket it. It is so close. Yeah, it, it is. It is so close. He, Jason probably figured, man, tough crowd. Let me clap for myself. <laughs> That'll get him going. You know, and it, it, sometimes it takes, the times I've been in a arena situation, which have been very few, um, it kind of relieves you the, mm -hmm. uh, of your nerves sometimes to just let something out to make it happen. It's like when you're, you know, speaking in front of people, sometimes you want to tell a joke to get at ease. Sometimes, well, Jason, he doesn't need it. He seems so at ease anyway. Right. But sometimes it just makes you feel good. <coughs> because now you're one of them and now you don't have to be nervous. Oh, you let him see the four. Yes. As I just, as you just noticed. Yeah, I don't think you can see them until they well, got he, the, Did he get there? Yeah, he's got um, another jump shot. Well, gonna, he might have, have a rail first shot. Again. He might have a rail first shot. <laughs> he's gonna look at that first. Yeah. That's where he's looking to go between the eight and the ten. Come two rails between there, off the five. One up, he's gonna end up behind the ten.
just a fraction harder. What do you think, two inches, an inch? <laughs> <laughs> a game of millimeters, right? Oh, yeah, it can be. He seems to be calling, oh, okay. This is gonna be pretty tight. Well, it's going to give Sanjin a great opportunity to put one on the board. And he needs this opportunity. He's already down by four games. Appleton won that uh, last match, 10-9. to 9. So our final eight are Darren Appleton, Christopher Devis, these two right here, Edgy Geronimo, Wojciech Shevchek, now Yuki Oi and Eklund Kachi. I wonder if Oi and Kachi are tired of playing each other. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think so. They'll see many battles, especially Eklund or Kachi because he's so young. This young man right here, this 20-year-old Bosnian Herzegovina, will see a lot of high-level action in his future. We'll see him here many times oh in yeah. the future. No doubt about that. Mm -hmm. The nine ball must go Ooh, in the side. Did he get a little straight on that one? He Might is. have to do a little bumperoni action here, unless he, he can elevate or something. Well, it looks like is he st if he's not straight in, if he bumps the 10, he'll bump it right towards the, the side pocket. But he's coming back a little bit. Mm -hmm. He's elevating. First game will go to a timeout.
And we are back to the live action with Sanjin Pelovanovic to break the balls here. Trailing one game to four. After finally winning a rack. <laughs> See how he breaks these balls. Tony will break it down for you. Two ball right to the boards. It and looks like it's going to be dry. Wow. Oh, well, they were well broken. There were six yeah, or seven he, balls he across those the back good. line. Yeah. <laughs> cue ball was. I wasn't sure if that cue ball just came forward or if it was bumped forward. Down to the bottom of the table. Looks like Jason is probably going to uh, overcut this ball and send the cue ball down. <clears throat> Unless he wants, if he can beat the scratch with that follow, that's actually not mm -hmm. a bad shot if he shoots to hit it on the thin side or the pro side. As you said, he is an excellent shot maker or one of the best shot makers. And he's got a tall order here. Stay out of that scratch. It's a hole for position. Look how well he hit that ball. Wow. That's all you can say to a shot like that is wow. You know, some people may say he got lucky. The cue ball is going to go there regardless. But other people might say he got rewarded for making a great shot. And he actually measured. It looked like he was looking at that line coming out of there. Mm -hmm. And the two ball was in route. So kind of figured he might hit it. Here, I think he wanted to get a little straighter than that. He might still, he, he should still be able to, to draw it past the 10 ball. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, he's if he's pointing that way, then that means he has more angle than what we thought, and he's going to have to play the four ball in the lower right hand corner pocket. And he did have the angle to come down. He could have come down a little further. Yeah, no, here he, he might have no choice but to go up and down. Apparently there's something on the four ball that he wants cleaned off. Michaela Tab will mark the four, <coughs> clean it off, and set it back. You like that little tool? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. That way she can put the ball back exactly where it was. Does that remind you of any shot? The four ball? Uh-huh. That had to be cleaned at one time? Not really. Okay. That looks like exactly the shot that Jeremy Jones had in the Moscone Cup on the six. Oh, yeah, clean. yeah. Good that point. That was exactly, almost exactly yeah. the shot. Yeah, that he asked, he asked yeah. him to clean it, yeah. That's right. Well, it looks like he's going to have to go two rails here. He can play the eight ball in, in, in I mean, you want to play in the corner. You really want to play in the side, but, you know, oh, yes. this preference, you know, everyone's different. I, I mm -hmm. think just, you know, going across the table, it's just easier to play the eight and the nine in the same pocket, minimizing the movement of the cue ball. But, like I said earlier, it's, it's preference. Like how well he's controlling that ball. It's like it's literally on the string. It, it really is. His speed is, uh, I think I said it before, his speed is impeccable. It's just I feel like I'm watching a different player because I've been watching him play for years. He lives in Connecticut, and I'm in New York, so he played in my tournaments all the time. I got to watch him a lot, but I don't, mm -hmm. I don't ever remember watching him hit the ball so softly. Well. Like he has been on, in, in this tournament in the last three matches that I've watched him play here. It's like literally he's hitting the ball with perfect speed. So I, got, I feel like his cue ball speed control actually improved. Since well, the last time I watched you know, him, yeah. Running 714 balls, yeah. this is the exact methods you use to get mm -hmm. to what you're talking about. That's right. To get where you're, where you're talking. Because in straight ball, it's all, you don't fire anything. It's all just moving the ball around with good speed and position if it's, well, he's showing us why he ran 714 balls. His position is just uh, on a string, as you That's say. That's crazy. And his shot making ability is off the charts. Now he leads Sanjin Belovanovic, 799. He's probably higher at Fargo now, because that was the Fargo that was used at the beginning of last week. 
Uh, let me just run this Fargo real quick. I bet it's gone up because all these matches go in. And yeah. he's been <laughs> uh, playing at an extremely high level. And by the way, I know several people reached out to me about my clinics that I'm doing now. I don't know right. if you know, I officially joined forces with Predator to oh. do the clinics all over the country. And uh, I, I, I just want to let everyone who know who reached out to me that I will be getting back to each and every single one of you once I get back home. That's awesome. Another dry break from from uh, from Shaw and Pelovanovic yep. has actually gone down one point in this Fargo from last week. He was a 7.99 on paper, and now I just pull this Fargo up and it's 7.98. So how does that work? Because he hasn't lost a match this week. Well, does it, that have to? Does that factor in maybe the Alpha too? Maybe the Alpha. Well, the, the the Alpha tournament. Uh, it factors. Yeah, show? all of those. All of those go in. And it, it, if he's going down one point, it can factor. There's a lot of things to factor in. But one of the things with Fargo is maybe he didn't win some matches by the margin that Fargo thinks he should be winning at. Okay. Uh, or, or maybe a very low-rated player gave him one heck of a run for his money, uh, or it's just a little fluctuation that you that you know where Fargo fluctuates on a daily or month, uh, weekly basis. So, but he's down one point from where he started out. But we know he's been playing at a very high level. He hasn't lost a match in this tournament, and he won by some very good margins over Justin Martin, ten to two. Mishko Fortunski, 10-7. Mishko is close to 800, if not above. 8-6, uh, 8-7, 8-5. It's Mishko's birthday today, too. You know that. Is it Mishko? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, we well, share the same birthday. Happy birthday to Mishko Fortunski and to Tony Robles. Yeah, thank you, bud. My family put out a big uh, family um, message. Happy birthday. Happy heavenly birthday, Dad. Oh, wow. <laughs> so That's we've awesome. So we've been going That's through awesome. that. And and I actually typed in there. We were in a match yesterday, and I mentioned it was it was his birthday too. And Mark wished him a happy heavenly birthday. That's awesome. <laughs> it was he, uh, Papa Te Echea? Yes. Great. Was it Benjamin Te Echea? Happy birthday in heaven, Papa Te Echea. <laughs> he left us at a very young age of 51. Wow. <laughs> I want to say a, a very special hello to my wonderful wife, Gail, and my beautiful sons, Antonio and Jonathan Robles. I'm looking forward to going back tomorrow and spending some good quality time with my family again. Yes, and opening your gifts, right? <laughs> yeah, probably. They, they, who knows? They probably have a surprise in store for me. Yeah. Well, these four balls to get his second mark up and close that little gap. He's not hes not out of this match by no means. Two dry breaks but from Jason has, has, uh, has got him two games now. Uh, he, won't, he will not be breaking 5-6. He will not be breaking. Sanjin will be breaking this next rack after this win. So opportunity to go to 5-3. Absolutely, yeah, and you know, kind of that. You know, Chris Reinhold had an opportunity to make it close a number of times mm -hmm. in the last match against Oi. Unfortunately for him, it didn't happen. I actually watched some of that match on my iPad when I was having breakfast this morning, and uh, he missed a couple of shots that were surprising. Yeah, they were uh, just a little. Uh, uh, you said it best. This will, this will go on and we'll stay with you. Um, one of the things that's a little bit of concern, I, I almost started clapping with the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I did. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of talk about the venue we're at here, the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino. Uh, and we attended a meeting yesterday where they showed the plans to re- refurbish and remodel this property. Dreamscape has bought it from, uh, I guess, Caesars, and they leased it back, and have, are taking over pretty soon, and they're redoing, remodeling all the, f all the rooms, the convention center, refreshing the casino, 
and this should all be ready to go by December 23 but most importantly it may be ready by the next um, CSI Expo they're working you know, hard to get that I can't wait so it's completely redone George because I mean it's, it's gonna look amazing did you see the rooms yeah no I did not did. but I can only imagine Mark and I were there for, for that and we saw we saw the rooms and they're beautiful and they're really nice and it will be managed, I believe, by Hyatt. Well, I mean, I, you have to assume that, you know, if they're showing you all of this and everything, that they're, they're going to continue the relationship with CSI that, that they, they've had definitely. for years. They, they are very happy and do not want to lose CSI because there was talk that they were going to go somewhere else. Mm. And it was rumored. Yeah. Uh, now, Ozzy never mentioned that because I, you know, I speak with him uh, quite a bit. And... Uh, but a lot of the players, a lot of the people in the leagues and stuff were thinking that these things were going to happen um, because of rumors. And so to okay. quiet those rumors, that's why I'm saying what I did. Well, the four goes past the seven. Now we confirmed that. They just showed it. They showed the there, set yeah, angle. Yeah, there it is, yeah. Because I was wondering if he was going to play safe on the four if it didn't go. But that angle shows you right there. It yeah. definitely goes past the seven. Oh, wait. He came a little short Ooh. here. What was that? That was as soon as he hit it, I knew it. And he can't even make it in the corner, not in the other corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's going to have to play safe here. Can we try to get behind the 9, or do we run the cue ball up behind the 10? I like the cue ball behind the 10. Cut it real thin, go two rails. I would like. I like. I like banking at two rails and hiding him underneath the nine and calling the three just in case it happens to go oh. off the eight or something. Gotcha. You know that way you okay. still have position on the. On the see, I like kinda behind like the that. nine, kind of. Yeah, he just went by. It. Ooh, hard yeah, to hold. Yeah, but he 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 lost his cue ball there. Yeah, it was hard to hold. With yeah. thick cloth like this. Yeah. The dr the 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 draw stroke <clears throat> just works so so well. Oh yeah, it it's a, so it's well. a joke to draw the cue ball. Yeah. On new cloth. <laughs> Remember that power draw that Darren had against uh, Mika? Were you doing that match with me, I think? He drew one that he drew it at warp speed off a ball and it went one rail and then straight to the corner pocket. Straight to the corner pocket. <laughs> uh, quite the shot. Very nice speed. Still kind of an easy kick for Jason. Mm -hmm. Jason can go two rails and hit that three ball dead square. He might be able to hold it right there. Yeah, he should be able to hold yeah. it behind the seven. Send the three towards the nine. <clears throat> but he should call the side just in case because he might end up with a shot on the four if he makes a three yes. inside. Yeah. If he stops it there, he will. Good call. I like most of the ones you make, just like that. And he did exactly that. Well, I mean, you know, he was trying to stop it there, but I'm pretty sure he wasn't planning on having the three hit the six like that. So it's okay. The cue ball got a rail, and uh, he's left him behind the seven wall. Tough jump shot. And he's got Shorty out there. He's got that uh, Predator air rush. I think he's just trying to decide if he's going to shoot in the side or in the corner. You see, it looks like it goes past the six and past the nine. I guess he's going for the side. See, if you shoot it in the corner, George, you don't have to move the cue ball as much, you know, to play position. If you shoot and in the side, you're going to have a little bit of movement there. And he might get back behind the five. It's going to come back, isn't it, a little bit? Because of the way he's hitting it. No, he hit it on the right side, so it might work out. Ooh, I thought it was going to hit the eight and scratch. Well, he's left. He's turned. He's turned the eagle eye loose. And you know, like if if he, I don't know how he feels. He he's always been such an aggressive player. So he's playing. He's playing the big. But but it's not so much he's aggressive. He he's a great shot maker. If he runs into the five, he could play position. If he runs into the eight, he plays position. If he goes in between. He plays position. You know. Mm -hmm. One thing I could see mm -hmm. go wrong here if he he hits a five ball, and then ends up running into the eight. But wow, look at that shot. Oh, he's not going to get rewarded for. Oh, he, oh, he can, can make it in the he side. Can make it, yeah. Worst case scenario, he can make it in the side. I thought he was going to get all the way behind the seven, and uh, he made a very good shot. Got a kiss on the five, and thought he was going to get penalized. 
not only can he make it. Hit a nice speed, very oh, wow. nice. Makes it with great shape. Don't you want to just stand up and say clap, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> yeah. I think I, I like coming off the second rail here, to be honest with you, because it's, it's easier to control once you come off the second rail. Looking good to go to six to two. In this quarterfinal match. Let's see if we have any updates. And after these two balls are pocketed, we will go to a commercial break. Got some bills to pay. And then we'll update you on some scores. We'll be right back. No, don't blame me. And we are back. The players are back in the arena. About to get started. Jason Shaw will be breaking, leading six games to two. We uh, got this match started about an hour late due to some unforeseen circumstances. And um, so our two o'clock match will be pushed back, of course, because this one won't be over. And we only have one table to live stream. But I think you're being shown a great match by two great players. Let's see if he makes a ball because he came dry. He finally made a ball. <laughs> he raises his arms yeah. and says, finally. Well, he came dry the last couple of times, yeah, right? Exactly, yes. And he's got a shot. The one ball's over the pocket. The two ball's over a pocket. The three ball's a little tight. He's going to have to do some work there. 
think he's looking at the angle of maybe going two yeah. rails towards the seven. Does the ten ball? Does the ten ball <laughs> plays big there, doesn't it? Well, I, I mean, judging from him pointing the way he was, I, I can't tell if the three goes past the four or not. Yeah. He got the angle. So if he it doesn't wanted. go past the four. Is he going to try to run into them? Or is he going to try to go two rails if it does go and run into the seven or, or come short of the seven? See right there. Oh. So Maybe he's looking at a possible safe on the three if it doesn't go. I think you're right. You that see, like I say, you go running towards the seven, maybe come a little short. Yeah, he hit it too hard. That means he's probably trying to play safe and he can't. Not from that angle. Yes, he wanted, that's exactly what, you were, what he was doing. He was trying to play safe on this three ball and then... Um, Tuck him, in try to tuck him underneath the 10 yeah. ball. How good he hit that one, George? Rather, it's a little jump shot, but where do you jump to? You hit the, he might be able to see it. Yeah, it looks like he can. Maybe we can get a camera angle from that point C. You can definitely see it, because he's not taking on his jump cue. Mm -hmm. So he's going to probably try to put it in front of the four. Maybe super light tap. Unless he's going to put it behind the ten. One or the other. He's going to go all the way to the top and use the six five. Yeah, very nice. He left him a window. And I think it's a makeable window. And I think Shaw will shoot this. What won't Shaw shoot? <laughs> <laughs> a white flag. I don't yeah. think he'll shoot it a white flag. <laughs> yeah. He's a gentleman that way. Yeah, he didn't shoot it. So see, there's some shots he won't shoot. He played safe behind the five. That was. <laughs> uh, He's grown to become a very wise player. Well, he doesn't want to let this young man loose. You know, I kind of like kicking in the side pocket here and calling it because if the, the the three doesn't go in a direct line to the side pocket, it could possibly come off the six. It could possibly come off. Well, I don't think it's mm -hmm. going to come off the nine. The nine's too far away. But he has a couple of chances to make it. He's yeah, he was trying to corner. put him behind the five. That's yeah. kind of that's kind of tricky. Yeah, because if you hit it thicker, it was yeah, it was real tricky. If the five would have been lower, then I understand maybe why, because you know then it's 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 easier to mm -hmm. put him. Because then if the cue ball doesn't run into the five and drifts over, you still have the six, you know, as a blocker. Got you know? it. Well, this he's going to be close to this ten ball coming up for the four. Nicely done. Yeah, I think he was using a little body English for that one. <laughs> Don't hit the ten. Oops. Come on, keep rolling. did play it for the side pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of hard to, to, to play for the corner only because where the six and the nine are, especially the nine. Is he going to play for the other side? He's going to play for the, yep. yeah, it's a lot, a lot easier. He didn't get for the, other. yes, he did. He's there. And he'll come two rails right by the 10. He has a nice angle to make sure he, he goes by the 10, mm -hmm. no problem. Mm -hmm. Right towards that seven ball. Now he just goes across and is up with his, hopefully a slight angle on the nine ball. Well, the two finalists from last year are tied at two. Oi and Kachi. And Shaw's about to take a seven to two lead. And what you hear in the background. Waiting for this ball to be made. Nice shot. What you hear in the background are announcements from the BCA World Championships and the USA National Championships. In this particular ballroom, there's 110 tables, and what would you say, about 20 booths, 20 vendor booths, 20, a little bit more? 
Yeah, I, w- I would say about 20, more than 20, a little more than 20, mm-hmm. because you, ha- you have him in the back, too, by yep. the entrance. So, yeah, you're right. definitely more than 20 for sure. Uh, and so if but it's it, packed here. Yeah. You can't walk down a couple of the, uh, of the aisle ways between the tables. There's a aisle ways to walk back here. It's hard to walk by. You, you know, you have five people teams all over the place, and they, that means you have four people standing around and one person shooting. Meanwhile, this young man will be shooting and breaking the balls here, trying to get this Jason Shaw from running away with this match. Nice cue ball, great control. He's going to have a shot on the one. He's made a ball on the side. Back and forth to him? Yeah, back and forth. Position for the two. Everybody out there, you have to make sure you wish Tony Robles a happy birthday. He'll give you his PayPal, and you can just kind of send him. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate that, but no, I'm okay. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Um, so what do you think about this? Shoot a stop shot on the one, shoot the one three rails into the side pocket off the three. I'm yeah, just, I'm just kidding. Safety. But I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how crazy. I'm always I thinking. Am. I'm always. I'm a straight pool player. I'm always thinking of all the possibilities. But that, that's uh, not what I would do. I, I'm, yeah. I'm just joking. Over here, you, sh- you uh, should definitely cut this in and go back and forth and play the two. It's, it's a steep cut, but yeah. You know, it's not a bad shot. It's a three rail shot off the three in the side. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, well, you stopped the cue ball there. Yeah, you, know, you stopped what? the cue ball there with high English. But that's but not the shot, though. That's definitely Sanjin, not the shot. Just Sanjin has hit this perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And you'll probably stay there for the three in the corner instead of moving it around. And then it looks to me like he'll stay there for the four, six. Yeah, it's exactly. Very little cue ball movement right here. And he'll be straight in on this ball. Now, if he's dead straight, he's just going to roll up. And then play it in the corner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it make it makes sense to do that. Why would you risk uh, a combination where the four ball is going to come off the six and then head down table? Mm-hmm. Well, you can just control it. Uh, I don't know if he got exactly where he wanted to. I don't think so. I don't know if he can get past the six without touching it, or he's going to have to draw back. That's what I was thinking he would he would do and play the five in the side. Mm-hmm. But he's looking to play the five in the corner. This young man is an eight-time Euro chap. Okay. Something tells me he plays a lot of pool. Oh, yeah. So he's going for the draw, which means he's probably playing the eight in the side. I mean, the five in the side. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I actually like that shot a lot. Because he opened up the eight? Yeah, because it makes it easier to get from the six to the eight. You don't have to worry about moving the cue ball much to get from the eight to the nine. Where the way he had it set it up before, the eight was so close to the nine that when he shot the six, had he gotten to the eight, he had to go back and forth for the nine. Mm-hmm. That's what I call the make your life easier shot. Make your life easier. Yeah. <laughs> because he is making his life easier. You yep. Know? Yep. Mm, I don't think you want to shoot over the 10 uh, for this no, shot. No, he doesn't. And he's gotten right over the 10. The good thing about it is he's a tall young man. So reaching over it would be easier for him than it would be for you or I. Since we are vertically challenged at about 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, Very nice. What a great shot that was. Elevating right there and firing that ball in like he did is not an easy task. You gotta drop that cue stick right in the right. right place and follow through. This is just make the ball, right? Yeah, just come off the rail a slight bit, shoot the nine in the corner. Wow. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't expect to see that, especially after the six he made, you know. No, wow. but it was just make the ball, and sometimes, you know. Yeah, he's not happy with himself right now, and I don't blame him. Now, you try to pick this clean, right? Just fire it in, bring it back just a little bit. Yeah, I like drawing it just like maybe about a foot away from where mm -hmm. it's at, and then playing the nine in the, you know, if the 10 weren't there, you might want to consider go going rail rails. first. Yeah, rail and, first. You know, going, playing position for the nine in the same pocket. Exactly. And I, I've seen people go off the point, the right hand point, right -hand point, and then hit the eight ball on that side and come off the rail slightly. And go up. And then just go up. And then bump the nine ball. That's just, that's all it takes. Because he's just going to stop the ball or, you know, for the 10, just stay mm -hmm. off the rail. I was going to say, when you're teaching, uh, do you teach them to shoot balls out of the pockets like that? Oh, yeah. I, t I, I wrote an article with Billiard's mm -hmm. Digest a long time ago where I'd rather have the ball away from the pocket than inside the pocket. Exactly. Like because when you have it away from the pocket, all you got to do is figure out where to hit the cue ball. And this 10 ball, and uh, we'll con we're going to go to a, to a commercial break. We ate two. to the live action here at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino. Jason Shaw leads eight games to two in a race to 10 over Sanjin Belovanovic, who is yet to taste defeat in this tournament. And if he gets a taste of it, he's gonna have to go home with it because it will be over and he Watch will take Watch a cue home. ball. Straight in the side. He will take home his $8,000 for a quarter finalist as a quarter finalist. But he's got ball in hand here, so a glimpse of hope. He can write things pretty quick since Shaw broke the balls. He runs these out, or if he wins this game and then has the break and wins that one, well, he'll double the score. Yeah. I like coming between the four and the five here. Yeah, just like he's pointing for the two mm -hmm. because he has a nice little gap, you know, right between the two, four, and four and five. Doesn't have to hit it that hard. Going for the side pocket, just like you just mentioned. Now the question here is, does he like the 4-9 carom? Does he like the combination? I think the 4-9 carom is better because he can then, you know, hit it with enough speed to come close to freezing that four ball towards, um, you know, on the rail. Mm -hmm. 
You think he wants to push it uh, on the rail or maybe uh, push it past the seven? No, he definitely wants to push it on the rail because, uh, number one, the nine is going to stop the cue ball. Mm -hmm. And number two, he will have very little angle and manage to play position for the five ball in either side pocket, okay. preferably the, the right-hand pocket. And this is how he's going to play it. Let's take a look at what he's he doing. He just needs here. to make sure he doesn't overhit it and, and mess up the four from, you know, going in the pocket. So what you want to do is you want to hit this on the thin side if possible so that we have little movement on the four ball. Because if you hit it too full, you, 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 you transfer one. He hit a little too thin there. Yeah. He hit it a little too thin there. He kind of had to to make sure he made the eight, the nine, excuse me. Well, you know, he had his room in the pocket, but he's going to probably tuck him underneath the seven here. Well, the eight ball blocks the two railer. Is he trying to go past the seven? I think he might seven? be able to yeah. go two rails. Extension. Extension. Oh, he's going to do another yoga pose. <laughs> another yoga pose. According to your friend. <laughs> uh, oh, that, what a that. shot. <laughs> Again, he comes with a great That's shot. incredible. Wow. Reminds me of a poem out of the mouth of hell. Look at, right look at the replay. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Great replay. But out See? of the mouth of hell rode the 600. Mm. Oh, look at this. What a great shot, but did he lose it's control of the cue ball? A little too hard. He's going to, a little too hard. Oh, wow. He might side have won the dead straight in the side or close to it. What a shot. Matches the one he made yesterday in one of the matches. Oh, he overcut it. Looks like Sanjin is going to have to tuck him underneath the seven. Mm. Hmm. I believe we'll be staying with you after this rack, so I'll read off some of the matches. In this final stage, nice safe there by Sanjin. I <clears throat> wonder if he can go three rails or if he's going to go behind it, I mean in front of it. I like to go three rails. I like that shot. Just got to need to make sure that you go past the 10 ball. I guess he, he's not sure if he can. This is a wide angle coming off this bottom rail, Tony. Do you have any kind of a system for something like this? For yeah, a I, use like a par this? I use a parallel. So look how, wow, look wow. how good he hit that. Uh, how accurate. The parallel lines, parallel uh, rails. There's a name for that. Almost got away with it, but not quite. Yeah, I use a parallel system. Okay. Where I look for the midpoint between the ball that I'm kicking and the cue ball, then draw a line to the pocket that's closest to the rail that I'm going to strike first, and then parallel that line over to the center of the cue ball, wherever the cue stick is pointing at that point, then that's mm -hmm. where I line it up with Perfect. a little bit of, a little bit, just a half a tip of running spin. Nice. And it looks like we'll uh, put another X on the board here. Extension. He'll be breaking the next game, so it's an opportunity to pull two games and double the score. Whoa. Not over the tag. That ball almost hung. Big eight ball. J 
just right for the 10. He yep. will win this, and we will go to a commercial break right after this 10 and be back. Christopher Davis Ocampo is leading in his match. He's reached the quarterfinals and he's up over uh, Darren Appleton. While Sanjit Belovanovic has broken the balls, made the one in the corner, he's straight in on the two. Tony, we could have that closer match we were talking about at eight to four. Anything's possible in this game, George. We've seen crazy things happen before. It does, and and, and uh, just it, it, it's a joy to see when things tighten up. Uh, for instance, I just mentioned uh, Christopher Christopher Tevis from Lima, Peru. And he was down 5-0 in his last match. He came against back Carlo Beato. against Carlo Beato. And now he leads Darren Appleton in, this, in his quarterfinal, 1-0. Very early, but still, Darren came off of a big win over Robbie Capito, a Hill Hill win that almost uh, rose the roof off the yeah. ceiling over there with the noise that it created. And I think it all came from Darren. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm super proud of Robbie. You know, Robbie mm -hmm. came here not too long ago, and he's been uh, rooming with Carlo Beato. Carlos teaching him a lot, and uh, he's absorbing it like a sponge. And he said all he wanted to do was compete, and boy, is he ever competing. Well, so the student defeated the master, the teacher. Huh? Recently, yeah, in the tournament. Yeah. Yes. Meanwhile, this student of the game... rather advanced student of the game. At the young age of 20. Mm -hmm. Kachi now leads Oid four to two. I think the key here is to get as straight on the eight as possible. So you just follow forward. Slight angle here and there should be fine as long as it's not too much. Just don't want to have to end up doing a lot of uh, movement on the cue ball. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> I was going to say, so you don't want any heavy lifting, huh? No, no, no unnecessary heavy lifting. Can't hurt your back. 
I thought yeah. he was going to roll there. He could have rolled. I would have rolled. Yeah. Uh, I understand that, that that was a better shot, I believe. Yeah, so does that mean he's going to run into the 10 now? Or is he going to just go back and forth? Back and forth. And he's a little shy. This is not a this gimme. This got tough. Yeah, this got tough. This is by and no means a gimme. And all from not rolling on that eight ball. Because he was lined, like you said, he was lined up and he was in good shape for that eight. I think he meant to stun follow it a little more okay. forward because of the speed he hit it with, but I would I, I would have just rolled it. Being as well as as good as he was, of course, I totally agree. But he like they both cut these balls right down the rail, pretty darn good. Shot clock, right down Man. the rail. Great it's an awesome shot. shot. And he doubles his score in the last two games to four. Kayla Tab from Scotland, Edinburgh, near the Edinburgh um, area. Here on assignment. <laughs> uh, coming out to Las Vegas for this tournament. Well, for the last two tournaments, she's been here about close to two weeks. Two weeks, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't even feel I, I the, the You've time been here went about by. The time, yeah, I, the same. Yeah, I, I got here that Monday. I, yeah, I I feel like I've been here five six days tops. It, it, it does and because it just went by time. so fast. Yeah, and we're inside the whole time. And I'm already leaving home tomorrow, so it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Now you won't be here to to commentate the women's matches. No, you guys will be taking over. And hopefully with some of the ladies, I'll be able to hear you with some of the ladies. Yeah, I know. Well, Mark is doing it with Kelly Fisher this at the 4 p.m. match. Mm -hmm. Oh, there goes, ooh, almost the cue ball. Yeah, he made a ball, too. Mm -hmm. Open shot on the one. Everything is spread out. Yeah, this is to go on the hill. Yes. So this is a pretty big game here. Every time he's come to the table with an open table, he's completely controlled it. Thus the 8-4 lead. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he's going to do a little in between her here. Yep, he sure did. A little in between her there. And Very make nice. Th make things faster, he pockets the oh, seven. Yeah. You know what was nice about that shot? There was no risk of scratching. Mm hmm. You would have had to hit it pretty bad to go straight into the pocket with the limited room that he oh. had there, you know? Definitely. Because the seven, I think the seven had the whole pocket, yeah. Then when he shoots from, goes from the six to the eight, all he has to do is, uh, did he get enough angle there? Wow, it's, uh, this looks extremely straight in, but, well, let's watch what he does. Does he have enough room to uh, follow up? I believe so. He's gonna spin up a little bit. No, he didn't bother, he just came across. And some of the shots that he's really extremely good at is down the rail. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably end up playing the nine in the same pocket as the eight, two rails. Unless he wants to do another make your life easier shot, shoot the eight with draw, send the 10 towards that corner pocket, stop the cue ball there for the nine. <laughs> you know? I like the way he shoots, he's real nice and soft. Yeah, oh a lot, yeah. A lot of players that'll skid on sometimes. Yeah. That's an easy ball to skid. Like you said, the two rails for the nine. Mm -hmm, in the same pocket. And this two balls to put him on the hill. And the young Belovanovic, rather concerned at the time. And nine to four. He will, Pelovanovic will be breaking the balls at nine to four. Alternate break format. No early tens, no 10 balls on the break. A few empty seats on one, one part there, but we got plenty on both sides. 
spectators from the league players. <laughs> and here we go. Let's see how the kid hits him. Well, he's going to have to hit him pretty good because he can't allow his opponent to win another game. And it's definitely got this odd stacked against you. You know, you're playing a player of the caliber of Jason Shaw, and you have to win six before he wins one. Those are some pretty bad odds. Well, and plus he started out with a couple of really good breaks and uh, then kind of lost the handle on the break. He broke dry, I think it was like three times in a row. And still didn't really lose lose the games. He was able to put him on his side, get, get him back. So. Well, if he can make the nine there, if he drew into it. Good call. He's gonna. He's called the three railer on the one. He's gonna try to stick the cue ball right there behind the nine. Mm -hmm. And that was a good call, Tony. About you know why not play the nine? I mean, you know, if he would have if if he, if he would have played the nine, he would have to hit a little thinner. I think he might have sure. been able to make it and send the cue, you know, the one ball three rails, maybe even at a softer speed to control it better. Sure. It's just that, you know, you have to be sure that the one can clear the traffic up there before you make the decision to shoot that shot. And maybe he felt that, it, that, that he could do it no matter what, but you know, unfortunately he ran into it. He had a little masse on that, didn't he, for the one ball? He had just a little loop on it. And things look a little concerning for the young man. I think it might be past the point of concern. Yeah. I mean, I think you have to consider, he would have to consider himself pretty fortunate to have another opportunity at the table. Just at the table, just to put another, you know, mark on the board because uh, he would have at least two breaks, possibly three breaks mm -hmm. uh, to close out the set. Jason would. Nice little touch that we were talking about. I just don't see Jason not closing not getting this out. out. Yeah, yeah. Not closing this out. But we've seen stranger things, but not from Jason. Not from Jason. But there have been a couple of matches, a number of matches mm -hmm. that I've seen, this mm -hmm. and the previous tournament, where you think someone is just flat out running to win the, the match, and then boom, out of nowhere. Missed the ball right in front of the pocket. Kind of like the shot that he just shot right now. I've seen, I saw that missed earlier in the yeah. match. But it's these simple outs that make champions. Because not I everybody like, closes them out. I like drawing here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can also stun it. Play the 10 in the lower left-hand pocket. But like I said, I like drawing because you're just like sending that. it in a dead straight line across the table. And it's hard to fall. This is for the match. Jason Shaw over Sanjin Pelovanovic will be back.